we thought that we would do a quick um, pros and cons list. Obviously this is based on our van and our experience. Um, it won't be the same for everyone, it won't be the same for every single van, um, it might even be relative just for New Zealand. Um, this is obviously the first RV holiday we've done so we don't really know. Um, do we want to start with the cons? Yeah, we'll start with the bad stuff first. Yeah. So I guess the first one is trying to find parking for the RV outside of the holiday parks. It proved to be really difficult um, in terms of like it does fit realistically, the wheels fit within a normal car space, but you've got about a metre and a half overhang on the on the back, so yeah. that, you know, makes it hard to find something that will fit uh, amongst other cars and you'd have to then take into account what's behind the car park, whether there's any poles there or buildings or whatever it may be. So we've kind of found ourselves, like when we have had to do some, like park the vehicle outside of holiday parks, we've kind of parked the furthest away so we can park across car parks instead of in a car park. Um, Which generally, because the van itself, so um, I don't know if we've ever put it, so it's 3.25 metres high and 7.2 something metres long. 7.22. Yeah, so it's really complex to try and find something that will fit yeah and it's not like it doesn't make or break things it's just definitely something to note if you're looking <coughs> at hiring one um, when you're planning where you're going to go it's just about making sure that you've kind of got in the back of your mind you need to park something that's 7.22 meters long how am I going to do that and where am I going to go for, to make that work um, kind of leading on on that I, we noticed when we were um, driving around that a lot of other vans have them but ours don't um, in terms of the reverse camera so ours doesn't have a reverse camera for some reason the holes were there but it's been clogged up um, and being blocked so clearly something's happened in the past but that also made parking quite difficult and it made maneuvering around quite difficult um, in all the tight and you get into a lot of tight spaces around here so mm. um, that made life really hard but <laughs> we made it work yeah I guess the next thing is, um, and it's, we kind of debated whether or not to put this on the list because it's not really a con, but again, it's something that you kind of just need to be really mindful of. It is a small space. Um, we are only two people, you know, so when one of us is in the kitchen and one of us needs to get to the back bed for the luggage or whatever it might have been, you know, you do have to just be mindful of the fact that you are in a small space. Um, I think the one of the pros that we'll touch on which is like the inside outside of stuff helps with that um but it, it is definitely a small space yeah um another con that i found in terms of from driving um your visibility uh around you is extremely poor like they give you some pretty they give you pretty good mirrors and you see all your blind spots or most of your blind spots with the mirrors which is nice um but visibility in terms of what's around you is just very poor, very minimal. Um, especially again when reversing without the camera, you can't see uh, what's above. Obviously you need to keep an eye out for tree branches and whatnot, so you can't see them. Um, you can't see what's immediately on the van or add to, like, to the top of the back of the van. Uh, so generally you always need your second person out there spotting you backwards just to make sure that you're not going to hit those things up top. Um, the next one is definitely something we learnt the hard way, just ensuring all of the drawers are shut. Um, they do secure really well, you've just got to make sure that they're actually secure. Don't do what we did and forget to check and start driving halfway down the road to hear a massive bang, crash, shatter as um, all of our glasses broke and landed all over the floor. So just, you know, it's not really a con, it's more of our own stupidity, we didn't double check, but it's easy to forget, so make sure that you're checking before you um, leave camp that all of your drawers and everything is all secured. Um, something else that was pretty notable for us was that um, no AUX or USB connectivity on the front radio mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, or even Bluetooth rather. It has Bluetooth for phone calls but not for music streaming. Yeah. Um, it does give you a radio, the second radio IP of it. Again, it's not Bluetooth, it's only got that UX cable and you're separate while you're driving, so... Yeah, so, and you know, I think we've been quite lucky in New Zealand that the radio stations have been great and this car has a smart radio, so it's kind of filtered around for us. But I imagine that 
if you were in Australia or maybe in some more remote places that you definitely wouldn't have the radio kind of in and out. So USB or AUX would have made life a lot easier. Yeah. Um, I guess we could probably move on to the, the pros. Yeah. Do you have any other cons that we need to go through? Um, the only other con we had on our list, which we have down here, uh, we wrote on the back of a shoebox because we're professional like that. Um, is that you can't have the flat screens open while you're driving. Um, so, I mean, you could, but the noise is infuriating, so you just wouldn't want to. Yeah. So the pros, and there's a heap of pros. Like, I know that like, it's, it's a few cons, but there's a heap of pros. Um, so I think the, the main important part for people that are gonna be doing this type of trip, especially with families, I mean, the amount of storage, um, there's storage everywhere. Yeah. In here, you get about five or six cupboards. The storage under the beds, under the seats for the dining table. You've got rear storage outside of the van, so if you've got like bikes and scooters and that kind of thing for kids, there's heaps of external storage. Um, it's super easy to drive. Uh, obviously going back on, you know, the, the con for the fly screens, the fact that it has fly screens on every window and yep. the, the side door as well, which fully enclosed, you can leave them open, it makes a really nice, really nice breeze. Yep. Um, I, I assume when it's not freezing cold, it would be quite nice. <laughs> but it, it does, it brings through quite a nice cross breeze. So you've got the windows that sit above <coughs> as well that you can open um, and they've got fly screens too. So you can get quite a nice breeze into the van, which is really, really helpful. Um, it's really economical. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, we've probably used about 150 to 160 litres of diesel um, and we've done 1600 kilometres. So work it out at roughly I think we worked it out to be about 11 or 12 litres all up we've got to fill up again so obviously we don't have the exact amount but and we'll do um once we're back home in Australia we'll do a video on you know I guess a, a broader overview and we'll include how much paid for fuel how frequently filled up all that kind of thing but it has been really really um economical um, um I think one of the really good things obviously uh you're pretty mobile, obviously you're mobile with this, but you know, if your plans change or if the weather turns on you, like you're really not. So we were kind of thinking back to previous trips, like we've done, um, you know, we did our road trip to America, we did um, a top tour in Europe, and once you're out, that's it, you're out. So, you know, if you're out and about for the day and the weather all of a sudden turns to shit and you suddenly need your rain jacket, you either had to go all the way back to the hotel or you know, all the way back to the bus, whatever it might have been. Whereas when this is your main mode of transport, everything is there. So the few times the weather has changed on us, it hasn't been an issue, which has been really helpful. Like it seems so simple, but it's been really helpful. Yeah, it's been really good that, you know, when it rains, we can just come in here and get a change of clothes and you're pretty yeah. much good to go. Like you're not yeah. staying in wet clothes for the rest of the day. Like you're... Yeah, having all of your luggage with you all the time, super helpful. Um, the kitchenette. The kitchenette has been a massive thing for me. So when we think back to America again, and obviously we, we drove from LA to New York, so um, we spent a considerable amount of time in the car. Every second or third servo stop that you stop at, you're like, oh, I'll buy some snacks or do this or do that, whatever it might be. Having the kitchenette here and having the fridge has been a lifesaver. Um, you know, we've had apples, we've had yogurt, we've had biscuits, we've had drinks, we've had ice cream, we've had everything that you could possibly need in the fridge. Um, and it's got a mini freezer as well. So I, I imagine that if you had kids, it'd be really, really helpful because you'd be able to have all of the kids stuff in the fridge. Um, you wouldn't have to make as many stops. I don't know, having the kitchenette, amazing. Um, something else is pretty good. I mean, obviously you've got queen bed at the back. Um, so it's great for some space, but it's also, you know, everything in here is really easy to set up and really easy to be on your way and be ready to get going. Yeah. Um, you've pretty much got the freedom to go wherever and do whatever. Yeah, which we really liked. If you wanted to change plans, you know, like you didn't have to worry about oh but my hotel's here and I've got like it was just like all right well we're in the van and the van's our bed so we'll just drive there done and it was really good because like um you know we paid for all the we we did it the the glamorous way in terms of going for all of the the holiday camps so that we had a shower and a toilet because we're not dealing with that um and even still that was a lot cheaper than going to hotels and motels yeah, it's a really uh, economical way to have a holiday. We probably paid, I think about, I think the, the most we paid was about $49 in terms of an overnight stay. 
and most of them average between 30 to 45 so yeah realistically like you can't get a holiday you can't get a holiday a hotel um for that cheap per night yeah unless you're going to the really dingy yeah. yeah so one of the questions we had from a few people was around kid seats um they are kid seat friendly so um the chairs that are sitting in front of us where we're filming right now um has anchor points for um baby seats or child seats so definitely kid friendly um you can bring the kids along you can ensure that they're all safe and secure <coughs> they've got the anchor points they've got everything you need so um yeah definitely kid friendly which i think is a great option for a family if you're looking for an economical holiday Another thing that's pretty good, um, so obviously we have the kitchenette, so on board we are carrying 100 litres of water, mm -hmm. um, as well as a full 9 kilo gas bottle. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't have air conditioning, however it does have a gas heater, mm -hmm. so you can use in a gas heater for like a ducted heating system if you really needed to. Um, and it's a swap and go bottle as well, so you can just go to any petrol station or any major shopping retailer that has gas bottles and yeah. just swap it and you pretty much set it back up and you're on the road again. And I think the fly screens kind of negates <laughs> the need for an aircon. I mean, obviously we're here in May, so we haven't really had to deal with New Zealand summer, but you've got the awning out the side, which you can pull out, which would give you quite a lot of shade. You've got blinds on all the windows, you've got all the fly screens. So I think that indoor outdoor living um, option that the van gives is really, really great. Um, I think a couple of things that we also come up with that are, that are worth noting. Um, on our list really was the, the fact that obviously you need to be really particular about like you need to kind of plan what you're doing um, you know in New Zealand they have a tax on their diesel so you get charged I mean we're getting charged I think it was six dollars sixty per hundred kilometers that we've yeah. traveled so um, we factored that into our budget we knew already that they had the um, the tax Sorry, something on the camera's flashing, and we're like, what's that? I think it's just telling us that we've been talking for too long. Um, but there is a there is a tax on diesel. So we knew about that. We factored it into our budget. We estimated how many kilometers we were going to be driving and already had it sitting there. So that wasn't really an issue, but it's definitely something worth noting, um, just so that you're not blindsided by it when you drop the van back. Um, another thing was, you know, we went to one campsite, and we really wanted to reverse the reverse of in so that we had a nice view of the lake in the morning but uh, the power point that we had just wasn't close enough to the power point. Yeah so there might be some instances where you need an extension cable um, we made it work we just drove in instead of reversing in but um, depending on what holiday park you're in you know they might have the power point at one end and yours is at the other end on the other side that kind of thing so um, I think it's just you know, maybe have a spare one there or an extension cable there if you need to. Yeah, whilst it was only an issue for us once, I mean, it was an issue. So yeah, that's worth something that we had to, we had to note. Yeah. Um, obviously, I said, you know, we've got the, the gas bottle, so that heats the water up, but um, you need to be pretty conscious about what you're doing with that because that takes up to half an hour to warm up. Yeah, so again, it's just worth noting that if you want to have a shower, you need to give it half an hour before the water warms up. So again, not really negative. We didn't use it anyway, but yeah. just so you know and you've got that knowledge. Um, Even in terms of like if you're going to be using water for, for like boiling things like that or in terms of cleaning, like if that hot water's not there, like you're pretty much using cold water the whole time. You yeah, need to there is a kettle on board though, so... You know, worst case, you've got the kettle there. And I guess the, um, something that we learnt very quickly along, we do have the grill in the van, which is great. It's an, an amazing addition to have, and it's really helpful. But it's so bloody noisy. So bloody noisy because of the tray rattling on top of the other tray, and it was infuriating. Um, it took us all of a day to pull that out, and it just sits on the chairs while we're driving um, separated because the noise will drive you insane. So um, if you start driving and you hear some rattling, check the drill the grill I'm sure it'll probably be that yeah um, I think that's most of the things that we really had written down oh the only other thing we did have was um, New Zealand drivers are really respectful of you being in an RV I think they're so used to RVs on the road because it's a pretty popular way to holiday but just be respectful and move over 
Um, these are speed limited to 90. I mean, you can do 100, but you shouldn't. You should be doing 90. Um, they lose speed going up hills. New Zealand is full of hills. So just ensure that you jump over into the slow lane. If there's a space for you to pull over safely, do so. Um, the drivers will give you a quick beep to say thank you. They'll give you a bit of a wave, but just make sure that you're being respectful and you pull over. Other than that, I think that's pretty much everything. It gets a thumbs up from us, we'll do it again. And I guess that's that's probably like the number one <coughs> point is that I don't know if I would holiday road trip style without doing this ever again. So, big thumbs up from us. Yeah, it was worth it. it uh, it's been great. Yeah. Definitely do it. If you're thinking about it, just do it. Cool. No child bye. Child bye.